Hey guys, thanks for checking this video out. I'm gonna to try to make this brief. Um, this is a pretty in-depth uh, concept and subject, um, but I'm just gonna kinda of keep it really specific to this specific one uh, topic, which is running samples live using uh, the Trigger plugin by Slate Audio, and that is hosted inside of Live Professor. Um, there's another video I'm going to do talking about the patching and how I'm getting all the audio signals to everywhere where everything needs to go. Um, but for now, for the purposes of this video, uh, I just wanted to show you how this is all running. So um, we have <clears throat> what you're looking at is, let me bring this up here. Uh, it's Live Professor running our weekend template. Um, it has 32 inputs on it if you go through here 32 inputs and so basically for the drum replacement we are doing this only for our broadcast mix we are not doing this in the room um, <clears throat> we haven't gotten that far yet I have been thinking about trying it I've heard of a couple guys that have been doing it with some success uh, so once I successfully do that I will report back to you but as of this point um, we're just doing it in our broadcast for a broadcast uh, stream at the church. Um, but if you wanted to do it live, theoretically, this would probably be the same process. Um, it is very important that you do not attempt to just replace certain drums. If you're going to run them all, you need to, if you, if you want to replace one drum, so you want to replace the kick, you need to replace, you need to run all of your drums through Live Professor. Reason being is that way they will all arrive at the same point in time. Otherwise you will run into phase issues and time arrival issues. I'm not going to go into details on that, but just trust me, if you want to learn more about that, look it up. Um, there's, I'm sure there's videos on that. Um, but you just need to have a machine that can process all of your drum channels and run them all through Live Professor and then back. That way, whatever latency you induce, through the computer, through Live Professor and your plugins, they're all coming back to your console at the same point in time. Otherwise, this is going to sound super goofy, okay? Um, <clears throat> so, what you're looking at is a random assortment of plugins here. F6 is a dynamic EQ, and then Trigger 2 is our drum replacement software. Uh, again, it's made by a, a company called uh, Steven Slate Audio. Uh, that company is incredible. I would highly suggest you check them out. Um, I've been using them for years. I've been using Trigger for, gosh, probably 10 years in the studio. Um, so the way this is working is Trigger is inserted on, we'll just take the kick in here. It's inserted on this just like just like a, a regular plugin, just like you would in your DAW. So this, if you're familiar with studio work, working in a DAW, this is probably a pretty common concept, right? You have your, your channel, you know, I'm not going to go over the, the basics of Live Professor. I have, I've done that in another video. But um, basically, we're running F6 first and then Trigger. Um, honestly, you don't need to do this. Uh, F6 is not really needed. Um, I honestly just didn't reset the gain structure when I added Trigger 2 uh, after it. So I really just kind of left it, um, as it as it is and just added Trigger and then adjusted my gain and my detail settings. Um, to suit that. So, yep, there it is. So basically what is happening is the signal comes in from the kick mic. Um, and in our case, I actually have a trigger um, on the drum that is patched separately. And that is what's coming in here. It's not, we're not actually using the microphone signal. Um, if you don't know what an actual trigger is, um, you can Google it, look it up. It's a, it's a little PZO microphone that is uh, clipped to the drum. And it, uh, it's way more accurate than just using the, the microphone itself. And I'm not going to get into detail on that either um, because there's videos out there that I'm sure that talk about that. But basically, we have triggers on all of the drum shells. And what we did was I took the kick in. And instead of using the kick in mic, which is a 91, uh, I, I replaced it with a kick trigger. So on the input section here, I have there's a bunch of inputs, right? Well. I relabeled this as kick trigger versus it normally would be input one, which is our kick in mic. So I just repatched it inside of Live Professor and then added trigger to it and then adjusted my gain settings um, and it started to work. Well, there was a delay. 
a noticeable latency on this. And so what you have to do is go into the settings and then go where it says latency, set it to live. Um, low and normal will not cut it. It's, it's, there's too much of a delay. So you need to make sure that's set to live. <clears throat> and then you can see that even with it set to live, your latency on this uh, these series of plugins is four milliseconds. Now I know that F6 doesn't add any latency, so I know that four milliseconds is added by trigger. It's not a huge deal. Um, the other thing also to keep in mind is because we are not doing this in the room, our time that it takes this computer to process everything is it's a different. Um, it, it's not as much of an issue because this is going to the live stream. Uh, it can take more time to process. So you may even notice my buffer size is set up pretty high. Um, I think if I go and take a look at this, yeah, I mean, we're looking at over 20 milliseconds of delay, which isn't terrible. Um, but if you're in the room, you, uh, you might be able to hear that. It, it would, it's, you're getting close, I, I would say. Um, so that's one of the other reasons I haven't attempted to try it live in the room yet, uh, because of the computer we have running Live Professor at front of house is not as powerful as this one. Um, so, and that's a whole, that's probably a story for another video. But um, this machine is running trigger on kick in, kick out is just, it's the actual mic. And then I have another one that is snare sample, which is, if we look, it's the snare trigger, which I actually have attached to the bottom of the snare. Um, and I might make a video going in depth uh, if you guys are interested in how I have those triggers attached and how it's all patched and wired. Um, but the snare trigger is coming through where it's a snare sample. And so if I was to pull this up and click on it, if you can hear it, let me bring it up. And so I'm running, I'm running three samples on the snare, two close ones and a room. And then let me go back to the kick and the kick is doing three samples a direct, an overhead, and another direct. And basically they all fire at once when they trigger. So it makes a really, really full, consistent sound. Now you may notice that the fourth, the fourth channel here that would normally be a snare bottom is a snare top. Uh, the reason being is we're in, you know, in church, in, in a lot of styles of music, they're not just hitting the drum, they'll do like a, a, a cross stick or like clicking, playing on the rims. Well, that's all gonna trigger this snare sample. And so what I needed to do is create another fader that is the snare top. And so we can flip between the two, bring the two faders up and down. One is for the sample and one is for snare top. So if there is a quiet part where the drummer's playing a cross stick on the rim or something like that, we turn the trigger sample, we turn the snare sample down and then bring up the snare top, which is a beta 57. Um, and so we get that natural sound from the microphone. And then we've just kind of foregone the snare bottom because we didn't really need it. Um, and then moving down the line, rack and floor, same idea, F6 is in there, it doesn't really need to be in there. Um, and then trigger as well, it's close. And the room mic, and then the floor, close. And then the room mic as well. Also you may notice, I have these tuned down considerably. Um, we do really like pretty low tuned drums, we're going for kind of that Bethel feel. So everything's pretty muted, pretty deep tone, um, and that's it. Um, we're not really doing anything else in here after the samples. They're going directly to the console. Uh, we're running an X32 back here uh, in our production room. And we're just using the built-in compression and EQs and that basic stuff. And then we have uh, hats and ride. Um, I'll, I'll probably go and do a video on how we have our kit set up. I don't have typical overheads. We actually use those LP claw mics and have them um, clamped to the cymbal stands underneath the cymbals. So they're kind of like underheads. So they don't pick up the shells very much. They're basically cymbal mics. And it's a blend between, it's one mic that's on the hi-hat side and then one mic that's on the ride side. And that picks up the crashes that are respectful, respectfully on, that, on those sides of the kit as well. Um, <clears throat> so that's like a really quick overview of how you run your triggers live. Um, you know, and I guess I should say live for broadcast. We're, we are replacing the shells in our broadcast mix. Um, hypothetically, if you had a fast enough system, you should be able to do this in the room. And like I said, we haven't done it yet um, because the machine that we have in our front of house is just not, it's not fast enough. 
um, we're, we're doing pitch correction, uh, but we're not replacing drums yet. Um, once we update the machine, I'll probably give that a shot and just see what kind of havoc we can wreak. <laughs> um, but yeah, thanks for checking the video out. Hopefully that was clear and concise and not too drawn out, but had enough details in it. Um, if you have any questions, throw it in the comments below. If you have a better idea, a better way to do this, let me know. I'm, you know, I'm not the authority on all this. This is just how I figured out how to do it. Um, if you liked the video, hit the like button. If you want to see more, uh, subscribe to the channel and then hit the bell, uh, the bell button to be notified when there's more videos that uh, I've uploaded. So, um, yeah, if you want to see more videos like this, comment and, uh, yeah, hope you have a great day. Thanks.